Hey, it's Harrison from North Country Trains, and today I'm going to be showing you how to scratch build a chain link fence for your model railroad. I'm building mine at HO scale, but this can fairly easily be adapted to any scale. I've gathered my materials here. You'll need a KNS Precision Metals 0.032 music wire, that'll form your basic frame. And then for the gates, if you want them to be operating, you'll need KNS Precision Metals 1 16th brass tube. I also have my HO scale rule and my mesh material. This can be anything that you want that you think is scale size. Um, this is just some uh, plastic mesh. They're kind of hexagonal, uh, but you can use almost anything for that. Here I have some examples. Um, here's a fence gate that I made and a fence section. The first step once you gather your materials is to mark and cut the sections for the fence. So I am going to make mine lengthwise about 12 feet and heightwise about 6 feet. So if you want to make one taller that could represent a more industrial fence and a shorter one, a more residential. So I'm going to use my HO um, rule and mark it off 12 feet. And then I just use um, some wire nippers. Find my mark. And make sure you catch both pieces. Then touch that up with the file and cut the rest of your pieces. One more thing I almost forgot to mention is to leave a couple scale feet on the bottom uh, to stick it in your layout. Whether that be foam or wood, you need some way of attaching it. And on the top, if you're modeling a more industrial fence, you want to leave um, a couple scale feet for barbed wire. And this model was made for an industrial setting. I haven't bent it yet or installed the barbed wire. But this is what you would do if you wanted to put barbed wire along the top. For my um, somewhat residential fence, I am going to not be putting barbed wire. So I got all my pieces cut, and I have them here. I have two sides and then two cross pieces. And they are sitting on a piece of graph paper. And that is because I want to be able to make sure they are perfectly at 90 degrees to each other and that'll just help with the lining up process. So, rather than using glue on this project, I decided to solder it together since it's metal. And to secure them to the graph paper, I use um, poster tack. I just take a little lump and stick it to the graph paper. And just like that. So once you're done, you should have something that looks like this. And notice there's, I left plenty extra along the bottom, and that's just so I have plenty of room to stick it in the ground, into the foam or whatever I'm using for my layout base. So now I got the soldering iron heating up, and we'll get this thing together. So my soldering iron's heated up, so I'm ready to solder my first joint. Now. I made sure to put flux on the joint before I solder. That ensures that the bond is firm and clean. So, I'm going to try to work pretty quick. Get my solder in there. And that's all there is to it. I'll solder up the other joints and we'll see what this thing looks like. So at this point, you can pick it up off the paper, and you have your frame. And as you can see, there's still some flux on here, so I'll just remove that. Um, if there's any rough edges, just give it a careful touch up with the file. Now these are delicate, but yeah, that's it. And if any of these break in the future, just pull it off the layout and give it a re-solder. Make sure there's plenty of solder on there. It'll be harder to see the 
joints when there's mesh on that, which I'll get to in a minute. So at this point, you can either build more fence sections if you are looking to make a longer fence, which you probably are because not many fences are just one section. Or, if you are done with your fence, you can paint it. You can paint it with conventional paint using a brush, or you can do what I do, take a silver sharpie and run along the edge. And I think it looks pretty good, and it's super easy. Next, you want to prepare your mesh material. So I have mine here. I am going to cut it once I glue it to the frame, and I'll demonstrate that in a moment. But beforehand, I'm going to paint it silver with my Sharpie marker. I'm just going to hold it stretched out. Get it nice and silver. Once you get your mesh material painted silver, you can place your frame on it and tell yourself you are going to have a fence. So I'm going to glue this. I use super glue. Choose whichever side you don't like as much as the back of the frame. I'm just going to put some glue right around the frame where I want the mesh to stick. And of course I get some on my fingers because that's what I do every time. I'll grab it by the two little pins and stick it right down. Make sure you get that nice and tight and let that sit there for about 30 seconds. And then you're going to cut around the edge. Once you get your frame glued to your mesh, you can take a hobby knife and very carefully cut around the edge. So after cutting around the edge and removing the excess material, I have my finished fence piece. And as you can see, I kind of rushed it on this corner and it tore away a little bit. But that just adds to the realism because real chain link fences get beat up and the mesh tends to peel away from the frame. But if you want, you could reaffix re that or just leave it as is. And I left a little bit along the top and bottom just to represent the extra that um, often comes on the rolls of this stuff. And that's all that it takes. And at this point, I might go over around the frame with another coat of paint or Sharpie just to touch it up, and then I'll install it on a layout or um, probably a small diorama in this case. So here I have my foam diorama, which I just put some ground foam on, and I soaked it in alcohol and glue. And now installing the fence is as simple as poking those two wires right into the foam. And as the scenery dries, the fence will glue right in there. After letting my scenery glue dry overnight, I am back and my scenery is all dry and as you can see, the fence glued right on with it. It's not super strong, but it'll withstand some wear and tear. And there you have it. Now one other thing I like to do is to add grass tufts around the fence because oftentimes weeds will grow up around the fence and it just adds another touch of realism. You can also add static grass around the fence. Just be sure not to get any glue on the fence. Otherwise, your grass will stick to your fence and that doesn't necessarily look very good. Another thing you can do when you're going to install your tall grass is take your grass tuft and I've actually cut it in half so that you can get it closer to the fence. 
because not all clumps of grass are around. So that can just go right like that. And I think that looks pretty good. Every fence needs gates somewhere. So to build my gates, I assembled the frame essentially the same way, except I added this cross piece for both for support and because a lot of real fences actually have that. Also, on one side, I have cut the vertical support short so that it can swing freely. And on the other side, I made it a bit longer, so I have plenty of room to stick it into the ground. Now I'm going to head over to the layout, and I'll show you how I make these spin freely. So here you can see I've installed my brass tubing inside my plywood benchwork. And that is so the gate can open freely. So I'll set this down. And installing the gate is as simple as sticking the wire into the tubing. And you have your operating gate. I hope this tutorial has been helpful and that you've learned how to make your own scratch-built chain link fence. If you've completed this project and want me to check it out, please share in the comments below. And thanks for watching.